This was developed by Canadians. A game set in America that uses the metric system. Hmm. Far Cry 5 is a game in a long-running franchise of first-person shooters that are published by Ubisoft. The first one was developed by Crytek, those guys behind Crisis. You know, Crysis, Cry. Mm. Soon after, Ubisoft picked it up and ran with it, developing Far Cry 2, Malaria Simulator. Two games followed, Far Cry 3 and Far Cry 4, both being pretty samey gameplay-wise, but both realizing I could sell my game based solely on the villain alone. If he's charismatic enough, people will buy it. Blood Dragon was also released somewhere, but uh, nobody really counts that, even though it's the best one. It's all relative, though. Far Cry 5 is the first of the current gen games that isn't limited to previous generation hardware, so we've got a decent resolution and a hot frame rate of 30. Hey, when are we getting 1080 at 60? Never? Oh, okay. The frame rate doesn't tend to dip. Maybe you'll lose a single frame here or there, unless you play on Xbox One regular. Outside that, it's pretty good. It also looks pretty good. But with those pretty graphics, rear something really ugly. Really, really ugly. Poppin? I haven't seen Poppin this bad since Ass Creed 2. Guess it might be a Ubisoft thing. They've never really liked me. Much like I've never really liked them. The game is pretty, though. It has some decent lighting. The overall graphics are pretty good, but... That Poppin. I can't really fault them that much. Just give me an FOV slider. I wanna have fun. The sound design isn't terrible, but a lot of the guns sound like toys. It's a problem when the guns don't really kick. Paired with the sound, they feel like they lack power. The soundtrack, on the other hand, I feel like they did really well there. Maybe I'm just a sucker for Christian music. The other games, they had pretty forgettable soundtrack. This one, in my opinion, is the best out of all of them. As little as that means when the bar is set so low that I can walk under it. Who knows? How does Far Cry 5 play? Like the previous two, but with more quality of life changes. You can change firing modes now. Whoa. Maybe one day, like three games from now, I can remove my suppressor outside of the store. Could be asking for too much, though. What has changed since the last game? Well, this time you can co-op all of campaign, but only one person retains story completion. Cool. In two games, maybe they'll fix that one. They've added a guns for hire system where you call upon AI teammates to play the game for you. The animals are extremely overpowered. But hey, you can pet them, so I can overlook that. In typical Ubisoft fashion, I expected to climb a million towers, but then they made a really lame joke about it. Then didn't force me to climb a million towers. That's good. Mission variety in the game is pretty bland. Generally, you have fetch quests, kill quests, some quote puzzle unquote shit for skill points and cash, and the only fun side missions being the Clutch Nixon challenges, being little challenge races. Story missions are just exposition dumps, but are generally weak missions. It's just walk to the point while killing things. Nothing too special. It could be worse. It could be destiny. The problem the game somewhat has, if you only want story stuff, is you need to grind a little bit of the side content to be able to unlock the next story mission to progress it. I ran into this problem when my game decided to kill me repeatedly for being near a cursed statue and I had to start my file over. 
There are a few people who have been having this issue as well. I was told there was nothing I could do, but to start over. I mean, the problem's been around since 3, and it's still around. Who knew? Back up your save before going near it. I think you get the point of this clip. So where does this leave us? Oh yeah, there's a character creator now. It's not very good. And your character doesn't speak, so it doesn't really mean anything. Though you do huff and puff whenever you're sprinting. With that character creator came clothing, so now you can look like a redneck whenever you want. The weapon customization isn't very deep, as it's generally just scopes and extended magazines. A few colors. Same goes for vehicles. Colors. Overall, it's your typical Ubisoft open world game. You've played one, you've played them all. Some people like that. I'm no different. I like Mega Man. So how's the story? The story? I honestly don't even know. It rides this fine line of bad and awful. But at the same time, despite playing the game twice, I barely remember it. I'll try to give a basic rundown as best as I can remember. And to skip spoilers, go here. So off you go, you're set to arrest this cult leader for doing, uh, cult things. He tells you to fuck off, but you don't. Unless you do, and you get the meme ending. So everything goes tits up, and all your friends get fucked, and you get knocked out. But saved by some guy, who you'll probably forget after an hour. Because you'll probably never go back to Tutorial Island. The game then opens up, allowing you to kill the cult leader's family members in different areas. You got John, Jacob, Jingleheimer Schmidt, so choose whoever, it doesn't matter. But before you do, you have to do the missions to get them mad enough to face you. There are three tiers to it, and every time you enter a new tier of butthurt, they knock you out, outside of the bliss one, where you get knocked out two extra times. You probably get the point. So you get brainwashed into doing one of the lieutenant's bidding. Your dumbass knows it too. But you don't turn off your fucking radio. Like, dude, just fucking turn it off. Stop being stupid. Why is your character so fucking stupid? Each of the family members is pretty boring. They do that thing like in the previous game, where they taunt you the whole time. But they don't stick around the whole game like Pagan Min does. So you only get so much. You can find out more about them through dialogue and notes scattered everywhere, but they're still pretty weak. There is this one scene from this segment of the game that I really like, and that's the last tier of John's area, where you get ambushed at the church. There's a lot of quote subtle unquote things. The fact that the camera swings to the Bible that holds the gun. There's also this part where the priest pats the Bible letting you know that he switched them out. I really enjoyed seeing that the second time around. Eventually, you kill Joey Boy's entire family and he cries about it. Like his shitty family didn't have it coming, after everything that's been seen and heard. 
Did they want me to empathize with them? Well, I don't. So you go and confront Joey Boy, and he has your friends hostage and tells you to fuck off, and I'll let you all go. Or everyone can die. Oh yeah, every area had one of your cop buddies that were captured in the beginning. Except for one, because he blew his brains out. I would have too if I had to think too hard about this story. Man, fuck you, Bioshock Infinite fucking shit. Well, if you fuck off, you get another meme ending. So you choose to kill Joey, and he knocks over some brainwashing fart that affects all of your friends. But it doesn't affect you and him for some fucking reason. That fart affected you before. Why does it affect you now? Whatever. You proceed to then have a terrible boss fight, where you knock out your friends with bullets. Then you pick them up, like the bullets knock the fart gas out of their heads. Then you knock the boss out with bullets, and he says something stupid. Then detonates some nukes. And then your stupid as fuck friends decide, let's just arrest this guy who detonated some nukes. And your character is stupid enough to just agree. Your character probably has more drugs than blood in his body. A character whose brain probably barely functions due to being knocked out so much, instead of just ending his life right there, like his shitty family. So you drive away from the nukes to a bunker underground and crash your car, because you're still a fucking idiot, and guess what? You're unconscious again. Somehow all your cop buddies are fucked. But big bad Joey Rattata, he's okay. So he carries you into the bunker and says he's your dad. So yeah, the, the ending is pretty much everybody gets fucked and that's about it. To get from plot point to plot point by running your character unconscious every time is really bad. And you'd think the villain would be some charismatic asshole guy like the previous games to give you some motivation to stop him, but no. This guy's just some soft-spoken guy who wants you to fuck off. And at the point where everything is, shouldn't there be more than four cops storming this area? Whatever, it's fucking dumb. Alright, spoilers are over, so where does that leave the rest of the game? DLC, probably. Oh yeah, this game also has a uh, arcade mode. And it's decent enough. It has uh, an alright map editor. It's pretty easy to get the hang of, but I'm no map makey guy. I'm just some fucking idiot playing video games he doesn't really like. The problem with this arcade thing is, like any game with mods or a map designer, you'll probably find one good thing out of 20,000 terrible ones. You can actually play uh, this online with six players though, so that's neat. Is Far Cry 5 bad at the end of the day? No. It's a functional game, it's a game that works, and a game that people will enjoy. But if you haven't played 3 or 4, you can just buy those, it's cheaper than buying this one. But if you really like 3 and 4, for whatever reason, maybe brain damage like our player character, then Far Cry 5 might just be the average game for you. I did enjoy my time with the game, for the most part. I mean, if I didn't, I wouldn't have finished it so quickly. 